Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving chemistry and biochemistry as they relate to biology. In this video, I will be describing a measure of the concentration of a solution called molarity, as well as how you can calculate molarity mathematically. For most solutions that you find in a lab, the concentration or the amount of stuff that's in a solution will be labeled on the container. The concentration of a substance is important to know when carrying out chemical reactions and uh, especially when dealing with potentially dangerous acids and bases, such as the ones provided in the picture here, uh, is important for the sake of lab safety. There are a lot of different ways that you can measure the concentration of a solution. Common measures of concentration include percent by mass, molality, and molarity. The graphic on the right shows the three ways to measure concentration that I just described in addition to how they can be calculated mathematically. This video will describe one of the most common measures of concentration, molarity, which is the number of moles of a given substance per liter of solution. This measure of concentration is commonly used for a couple of different reasons. First, it's very easy to make solutions of different molarities in the lab. And second, when carrying out chemical reactions, it, it makes a lot of sense. And these reasons will be elaborated upon later. Before describing in any more detail what molarity is, it's kind of important that we talk about what a mole is. All things living and non-living are made up of atoms. One important thing to realize is that different atoms have different masses. The periodic table squares for neon and helium exhibit this pretty clearly. The bottom number in the squares of the periodic table exhibit the atom's atomic mass. One mole of helium would have a mass of 4 grams. One mole of neon would have a mass of 20 grams. An equal number of atoms of each of these elements would have a five-fold difference in mass if they were measured on a balance, for example. The reason that moles are used in measurement is because chemical reactions require relative numbers of atoms, not grams. By using similar number of moles of given substances, you can use similar numbers of atoms. What one mole really is, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or 602 sextillion atoms, or 6,022 with 20 extra zeros behind it, uh, that number of atoms. In terms of measuring atoms, there are three different numbers that you might be given. The number of grams, the number of moles, or the number of molecules. The graphic on this slide shows how you can convert between these different units. Most of the time, you will know the number of grams of given substance that you have, as that's a pretty easy physical measurement that you can make in a lab using a balance. To determine the number of moles that a substance you have, you just need one other piece of information. In the graphic provided on this slide, MM stands for molecular mass. If you take the number of grams of the substance you have and divide it by the molecular mass, which is the sum of all the atomic masses in that particular molecule, the number you are left with is the number of moles of that substance that you have. The formula for molarity is provided in the bottom right corner of this slide. If you divide the number of moles of solute that you possess in a solution by the total number of liters of that solution, you will arrive at the solution's molarity. The picture on the top of this slide illustrates how you can make a solution of different molarities. Since molarity is the number of moles of solute per liters of solution, if the volume of a flask, as illustrated in this image, happens to be one liter, you would merely have to dissolve the number of moles of the solute that you want to make this solution's molarity the same number. If you wanted to make a glucose solution with a molarity of two, you would just need to measure out two moles of glucose and then fill the flask to one liter. It's very simple to do and involves very little measurement. The calculations for some problems to determine the number of moles you possess or the molarity of a solution can be a little bit more problematic, so I'll provide some examples on the next few slides. In the first example problem, you will calculate the number of moles that you have. The problem states if you have 23 grams of NaCl, or table salt, how many moles of the substance do you possess? To calculate the number of moles that you possess, you will have to divide the number of grams of the substance you possess by the molecular mass of that substance. This formula is shown on the bottom right of this slide. This problem states that you possess 23 grams of NaCl. Since the formula to calculate the number of moles calls for this number, there are no calculations necessary. You merely plug this number into the numerator of this problem. The next step would involve finding the molecular mass of NaCl. To find the molecular mass, you would need to consult a periodic table. 
The molecular mass of a substance is merely the sum of the atomic masses of every atom in the molecule. The atomic mass of the element is the larger number found on the periodic table square. What you would find on the periodic table is that the atomic mass of sodium is 22.99 and the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45. Since NaCl has one sodium and one chlorine atom, you would just have to add the two atomic masses together to end up with your molecular mass. When you add the atomic masses for sodium and chlorine together, you would find that the molecular mass of NaCl is 57.44. The molecular mass of NaCl is the denominator for this equation, the last factor that you need to calculate the number of moles that you possess. By taking your number of grams divided by the molecular mass, or 23 divided by 57.44, you would find the number of moles of the substance you possess to be 0 0.40. For our second example problem, what we'll do is calculate the molarity of a solution. This problem reads, if you dissolved your 0.4 moles of NaCl in a solution which totaled 2.7 liters in volume, what would the molarity of the solution be? The equation to calculate molarity is found in the bottom right of this slide. This problem provides you with both of the values that you would need to calculate molarity. First, the number of moles of solute that you dissolved in this solution is listed here, 0 0.40 moles. Finally, the volume of the solution is also listed here as 2.7 liters. When you divide the number of moles of solute that you possess, 0 0.40, by your volume, 2.7, you'll be left with the molarity of your solution, which is 0 0.15. Units are not provided on this slide, but typically what you'd find is a capital M after the 0 0.15. Not all problems will be quite this straightforward. Sometimes you'll be given the information as the problem above, the number of grams of solute that you possess, and asked to determine the molarity of the solution. By using these two equations from the previous examples in conjunction, you should be able to determine the molarity of the solution. That is the end of this video summarizing the concepts of the mole and molarity, explaining how they can be calculated. If you're interested in learning about any other chemistry or biochemistry concepts as they relate to biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.